Hey guys, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today and do a kit and recording setup tour. I really enjoy seeing other, other people's setups on YouTube and whatnot, so I thought I'd show my own. And if you want to send pictures of your own setup in the comments, feel free, I'd love to talk about gear with you. The other reason is I do get gear questions every now and again, so I thought I'd do this video so the, I have like the very complete list of everything I use and so people can just refer to this video if they have any questions. I know not everyone will care about everything I'm gonna go through in this video so I'll leave uh, timestamps in the description for every uh, every section. Okay so the kit itself is the Mapex Pro M, well the main kit that is because I've added some pieces. It's a 7 piece uh, so there's the 8 inch thumb right there, a 10 inch and a 12 inch. The 16 inch floor tom. That second floor tom is an 18 inch pearl decking maple. I really love this thing. And that over there is the 14 inch tom that I don't use that much because it doesn't sound that great. Uh, this is the main snare that came with the kit. I think it's 14 by 5.5, but I don't really use it because that lug it just completely snapped off when I was changing uh, the drum head on top. So I don't really use it that much. When I do use it, I put this like. Uh, extra drum head on on top of it that I cut off so it sounds like super fat. It's a, it's a good side snare. My main is a Pearl Modern Utility, so the steel one. It's 14 by 6.5, believe. For the cymbals, the IS are the 15 inch frequency adds, and the left crash is an 18 inch uh, medium, yeah, medium tin crash from Sabian. Then the splash is an 11 inch explosion crash. The ride is a 21 inch, but I'm not too sure which model it is, to be honest. The logo is all rubbed off and it's almost as old as me, so I don't remember. Uh, then the ride crash is a 20 inch explosion. The China is a 20 inch one China. I absolutely love this thing. And then my main uh, stack that I use almost all the time. It's a super old and super cheap 20 inch solar China. I think it's like a sub company from Sabian. Super cheap, but uh, and on top there's a 16 inch ISO crash, and then there's a another couple symbols that I for, forgot to film. I swap them in and out sometimes when I want some like extra stack options or something like that. So there is the 18 inch Wuhan China that's cracked and doesn't really resonate that much anymore, so just use it for stacks. And uh, on top of that China, I mostly use a 14 inch. Um, a crash from Sabian that just doesn't sound really good on its own so I just use it for stacks. Then I've also used that 14 inch crash with a 8 inch splash as a stack That's from, that splash is a crest I believe it's some really cheap splash it sounds like shit but as a stack you know it's, it is what it is. And so for the pedals I have the Speed Cobras from Tama just like the, the cheaper model the Trundle I believe it is. And that's about it for the kit itself. And for the recording setup, I have two sets of uh, pile drum mic kits. It's basically uh, like one kick mic, two overheads, and then four snare slash drum mics. So I have two of those, and then I plug all the mics into these two units. The main interface is a PreSonus 1824C. It's an eight channel interface. And then underneath that, there's the Behringer. ADA 8200, it's just 8 mic frees that I link to the Precionos one with the NADAT cable. And so in total there's 15 mics and that's why there's such a mess of cables right there. For the kick on the outside I have one of the bass drum mics from the mic pack. And then I have a Sennheiser E602 on the inside. And then I have just a bunch of the thumb mics on each thumb and on the underside of the snares. And then on the i I also have a thumb mic. I didn't use the one of the extra overheads because they actually don't sound that good on on close miking cymbals. Then on the snare I have a SM57, which is the classic snare snare mic. And then on my 18 inch I have the other bass drum mic on there. And then as a room mic in that corner I have a, a one of the extra overheads. So I just set it up in this little nook so it doesn't get like the direct drum sounds, it just gets the reflection of the room. Then for the video gear, I have uh, these two newer LED lights. They're like super cheap but they work super well. I think they're like 100 bucks on Amazon for a 2-pack. 
And for the cameras, I have three GoPros that I set up in these clamps. And then there's the little camcorder that I'm recording with right now. This is my dad and I's little guitar collection. Two of these are his and two of these are mine. And so my acoustic is this Taylor 214 Co. It sounds super good. It's a really insane acoustic guitar. I love it so much. And it's also really beautiful. And then my electric guitar is this Epiphone Les Paul Classic. Now for my PC setup, my the main computer that I use is this one just set up in my room. The specs are a Ryzen 1600, so that's the 6 core 12 thread uh, one. Then I have an RTX 2070 and 16 gigs of RAM. On top of it, I have this audio box interface that I use for recording guitars or if I wanna ever record vocals, I guess. It's just a cheap to input interface. And then these are the headphones I use for mixing. It's just the HyperX Cloud 2s. They're like gaming headphones, but that's what I have, so. And then for my virtual instruments, I have this M-Audio key station. So it's just swaying around in our storage space, so I grabbed it and set it up bigger. That's about it for the tour, so let's head into Studio One, and I'll show you how the kit itself sounds. So this is the session I'm gonna be using to show you what my drums sound like. These are just some drum tracks from a song idea I've been working on lately. It's nothing crazy, but it's the only thing I have recorded with the specific setup I just showed you earlier. And so first let's check out how everything sounds raw and then uh, I'll show you the sync part again but with a rough mix. So that was raw and then with the mix. So that would still need some tweaking and balances. I did this fairly quickly just for the sake of this video. But if you were to solo the, my drum tracks for one of my covers, it's pretty close to what it would sound like. So I, I don't want to do a full mixing tutorial, but I do think there are some cool tricks in there that I want to show in case you're doing your own covers. So I'll go through everything kind of quick. The first thing I do is I'll route every single one of my tracks into a bus. And so, it, like any plugin I put on here will affect all of my microphone at the same time. And what I do on this is I just put a compressor and some EQ on it. I boosted the lows of touch, removed some mid-range just to clean up the sound. And then this compressor is pretty light, it's just to add a tiny bit of punch to everything. So it affects, it's mostly affecting the kick and snare, but a little bit of everything else too. And so this is how it sounds without and with the uh, the fat channel. And uh, yeah, so after that, I just go through everything one by one. And so on the kick, uh, I I have almost nothing going on. I just got a little bit of a cut above 100 hertz in this case because it was kind of building up there and it sounded weird and I have just a very slight roll off in the low end like very low end just in case like if you're listening on a subwoofer and it, so it doesn't go crazy because uh, my headphones can't really replicate these, these low frequencies so it's, it's just in case and then uh, on the kick out mic I just rolled off the high end just to get rid of that cymbal bleed I'm just using this for the for the low end so I don't really care about any of this stuff I up there and then uh, one cool trick I, I have for the kick drum is I do a copy of the inside mic and I, I just named it kick snap in this case I roll off the low end completely and I boosted the ice quite a bit so you, you really get like that that snap of the beater on the head 
and then I just gently blend that in so that way it's way easier to hear if you're listening on a phone or laptop speakers that doesn't have like that really low end and uh, yeah on, on its own it sounds pretty bad sounds like this like you, you don't want that to be just your kick sound but blended with everything else it sounds pretty good And then after I go on the snares, uh, they sound fairly good on their own, so I don't do too much. Uh, the main snare just has a, a little bit of low end rolled off to get rid of the muddiness. And then I boosted the low mids just a touch to get like a little more beef out of it. On the second snare, I rolled off the low end again, and then I just cut there. I think it was just ringing weirdly at that frequency, so I just cut that. And then I have some light compression on both. This one, I uh, just four to one, and then uh, three to one on this one. I think yeah. They they are fairly fairly mild because we already have compression going on in the come on, because we already have compression going on in that uh, fat channel. So it was just to get just a little more snap out of the snares. And then I added the little bit of reverb on the the main snare because the. Um, my drum head is really old now, and so it sounds fairly dead. And uh, I just use this to bring a, a little bit more life in it. But I, I use it very sparingly, though. Uh, afterwards, on the toms, I... If, if there's one thing in this, in this part that you probably don't want to copy, it's the toms. Because I don't like their sounds too much, I really need to work on them more. But if you do like the sound of them, then uh, this is how I do it. So the first thing I do is I use this uh, this plugin I got from um, when I bought my audio interface. It's basically a bunch of like preset sounds for everything, for like almost any instrument you can imagine. And so what I do is I do toms and then bring out the toms. And then it comes with like an EQ and this thing. The EQ I don't use, I just do my custom one so I remove it. But that transient shaper I really like so I just, I, I keep this. And it adds, uh, basically just adds attack. Like, I'm, I'm not sure what it is exactly. Cause it's not compression, I don't think. Because they also have compression in there. But, I don't know, I, ju I just like how it sounds. So I just keep it there. And then, in the thumbs, what I do basically, uh, this is a 16. Rolled up some low end. Uh, boosted the fundamental note a little bit. Like, this was around 100 hertz for this one. Uh, removed some mid range and then added just a touch of fly in for the that snap and then in this one it's almost the same thing for the 12 inch drum except I just got some weird ring frequency uh, in addition and so yeah this is how they sound like on their own oops that is not what I meant to do that is how they sound like on their own it's, you know it's nothing like super crazy but it's it is what it is so for the cymbals, I do almost nothing. I just remove some low end, get rid of some muddiness, but I, I don't go too too high up because I still want to uh, capture like the overall vibe of the kit. So I get some thumbs and snare in there for uh, through the overheads. And then on the hi-hats, I just boosted the highest a touch, just get some a tiny bit more crispiness out of them. So that's how the overhead sounds. Like they sound pretty damn good on their own for, for what they're worth. So I just leave them as, as they are. And then on that room mic, this is probably one of the my favorite tricks that I've found so far. I think this sounds really cool. Uh, without plugins, this is how the room mic sounds. You know, it just, just sounds like the room. And then the first thing I do is I just clean up the, the lows in the mid range. So I don't get extra muddiness. Nothing super crazy, but now this is the jam. This is basically some uh, some distortion plugin that I got from uh, when I bought my interface again. I, I did use the um, the standard this distortion plugin that comes with my my DAW. Like they both work, they do the same thing basically. I just like this one a touch more. And so basically, this just like completely destroys the sound of the room mic, and this is how it sounds with it. 
it sounds really nasty on its own but if you just gently blend this in with the rest of the tracks i think it adds so much character to to your drum tracks and so this is how it sounds like with, without and then i'll bring it back in so you can hear the difference Yeah, that, that's that's about it. I think I, j I just added a touch of reverb on the on the kit at the end just to give a little bit of space. But uh, apart from that, that's that's about it. I don't do anything super crazy, except maybe for <laughs> from that room mic. That's I think that's really cool. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.